Ja. Ja. Exodus chapter 20. Uh, verses 1 on to verse 17 from the authorized version of the scriptures. Yeah. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Stop. For our instruction and in righteousness, the Lord brought us out of our last li out of our lost life, and is bringing us onto Himself, to eternity, to Himself. You know that kind of thing. Egypt is synonymous for our instruction and in righteousness for the world. And one, one, one second there. Yeah, yeah. You weren't expecting that one, were you? <laughs> okay. Thou shalt have no other gods. Before me. And people who are idolatrous, idolaters, who just as if I, anything they do, they will make statements such as, well, I'm not worshiping this thing. Other gods, lowercase g. And remember, Satan's temptation was what? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, you being your own judge instead of the Lord judging you through his word, that kind of thing. Okay? But it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hmm. And a lot of these people will say, well, I'm not worshiping that or blah, blah, blah. But see, what is happening is with the idolatry that is of such today, it's taking the place of God. See, right away, now, in context, what is he talking about? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Is he talking about the little statues? Yes. But see, anything that is taking the place of God in your life, you're exalting above him, that's a problem. That's a problem. And just as if I, they go, well, I'm not worshiping, or they go to Romans chapter 14, and start saying, oh, you people. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Hmm. Roman Catholicism takes out the second commandment about uh, the idols there, about the graven images. And what do they do? They take the tenth commandment and bump it up to two. And if any of you are familiar with Roman Catholicism, and all their graven images of the angels and the saints, which are all pagan demigods under the guise of Christianity. You know, I, I, and I appreciate um, atheists and whatnot when they, they call Catholicism on the blatantness of it. But, you know, there again, they're, they're worshiping the same God themselves, but just in a different form. I recently came across this Muslim individual um, who I wouldn't mind talking to that guy. He he does these short videos, you know, the shorts, um, not the ones I'm wearing, thank you, but uh, he does the shorts, and he's confronting Christians with a Bible. <laughs> it's it's um it's it's cringeworthy because. This, this Muslim guy, um, well-fed man, beard and whatnot, um, obviously putting on a shoe, um, he, he's just decimating these Christians with a Bible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's cringeworthy because these Christians are so oblivious to what and this and like I said, this Muslim is using a Bible. He, he ain't using the scriptures. <laughs> he ain't using the scriptures, but uh, he's using a Bible and confounding these Christians. Hmm. And I bring that up 
because the Muslim knows better than the Christian today, who thou shalt not make any, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. And modern Christianity today, that's what they're doing. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Right away, we instinctively think of what? Profanity. Using our Lord's name as a curse word. Or saying GD this or whatnot. That's bad. That's, don't do that. Don't do that. Saint. When that happens in your presence, make it at least known that a saint is there who heard that and acknowledges the offense. Okay? Granted, like if you're in someone's house and you don't want to like be uppity in their own house, uh, that's between you and the Lord. But, you know, you hear that stuff. You make sure you at least... At least. Be a smart Alex about it, at least. Okay? Okay? Just saying. But when it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You know, Christians are taking the name of the Lord in vain by attributing to, that, attributing to themselves Christians, because you ask, what is a Christian? Someone who worships Christ. Which one? Christ means anointed, anointed one. Oh, there are a whole lot of uh, anointed ministries out there right now, isn't there, huh? You know, I'll never forget David Wilkerson and his one thing, uh, where he's like, the anointing's on me. I'm, um, the anointing's on me right now. It's like, <laughs> okay, so what? You're calling yourself another Christ, Mr. Wilkinson? Huh, Mr. Wilkinson? Mm. Mm. You know, keep that in mind. You know, well, what is a Christian? Someone who follows Jesus. Which one? Well, there's only one Jesus. Well, there's only one Jesus who is. That is true. But Satan has given you many Jesuses. Okay? The ultimate way in taking the Lord's name in vain is attributing the Lord unto yourself when you are none of his. That, dear friend, and that, that, verse 7 here, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. You read on later about how a guy curses and takes the name of the Lord in vain and they stone him. Yes, that's obvious. Yeah, like I said, yes, that encompasses that. But you see a whole lot of people saying they're Christian and attributing to themselves what they think is a representation of the true living God, when in fact it is not. Mm -hmm. you, you roll that around in your head for a little while. Tell me what you think. Now, a dispensational difference here. Okay, because when you read Romans chapter 13, <laughs> it is not a commandment for us to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath was a sign specifically for the Hebraic Jewish people. 
If you want to keep the Sabbath, which is Saturday, I did that purposely. You want to keep the Sabbath, which is Saturday, uh, knock yourself out. Go right ahead. If you want that day to be the day that you give everything to the Lord, which we ought to do every day, but scripture lots for, hey, at least put one day where you just pay attention all to me. Would not worry about these trifles, okay? That is, that is scripturally accurate and provable without a shadow of a doubt. If you want to keep the Sabbath, knock yourself out. Don't you dare come around telling people that, number one, it's a requirement to be saved and stay saved and be right with God. Okay, don't you dare. And don't you also dare in doing that, saying that people are lost because they're not doing it. Okay? All right? Keeping the Sabbath is not salvational today even to the Jew, okay? All right? Because you got to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then when you come to the Ten Commandments here, you got guys like Mark the Messenger who's like, oh, you got to keep the commandments. And it's like, dude, Acts chapter 15. They, it's like, we couldn't, we can't keep the commandments perfectly. Okay, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ. As Paul says, as James says, you break one of them, you've broken them all, okay? These are God's perfect requirements. His perfect requirements. And it doesn't take you long to figure out that you can't do it. Hence, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us onto Christ, okay? People, listen to me. Look at me. When anyone comes to you trying to tell you that you have to keep the commandments today to be saved, rebuke them. Call them an imbecile. Call them a fool. Seriously. Okay? Call them a fool. A fool says in his heart there is no God. And if you are keeping the commandments today salvifically, then it's your glory, not his, okay? Read the book of Galatians, okay? Read the book of Galatians, all right? And these people who say that you have to keep the commandments today to be saved, they don't rightly divide the word of God. I mean, sleazy believists even got this part right about the keeping the commandments and give credit where it's due. Some of the sleazy believists also do very well in debunking that about the keeping the Ten Commandments today. Even some of they, them do well at this, okay? So people, don't stay away from, stay away from sleazy believers. They're, they're wicked devils leading people to hell, okay? But when someone comes to you trying to tell you that today you have to keep the commandments in order to be saved, stay saved, be right with God. They're, they're, they're um, saying to you words with no words with uh, words to no profit. Okay, all right. They're speaking to you words of no profit. All right. They're subverting you. We've addressed this before. But <clears throat> verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We're not commanded today to keep the Sabbath, okay? If you want to, fine. Salvifically, it is not a requirement to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? And when you come around saying that it's a requirement today, you're lying, okay? And you're taking something from another dispensation and trying to make it applicable for today. For today. Seventh-day Adventists, who some of them attack the Jesuit order really good, but they messed that up bad. Okay. Some are wishy-washy about the whole seventh-day thing. If it's salvific, some I've heard say that it isn't. Some have. There's dissension because it's not something that's uh, applicable for us today uh, doctrinally. So, okay. But remember, today, salvifically, it is not a requirement to keep the Sabbath. If you want to, go ahead. Salvifically, no. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, 
thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days, not seven, dear friend, six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That, that's, you know, that's a kind of a ignorance. Ignorance is not knowing better. Mistake that I've noticed a lot of people will say, well, God created the earth in seven days or created the world in seven days. No, it was six days. He rested the seventh day. Okay. That, 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 that's kind of that. Uh, we've, we've run into that like <laughs> tons of times. You know, it's like, well, yeah, God created the world in seven days. No, no, dude, it was six. Just all you got to do, I mean, if you have the scriptures, take them here. That's it. Just, you know, don't get shocked by that one, brethren. <laughs> okay, just don't. Just be like, you know, it's like with revelations over revelation. You know, it's like. No, 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 dude. God created the and created everything in six days. And, and just leave it, okay? Correct them scripturally, but just like I said, okay? Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. People like to, you know, especially the Jesuit trained cemeterians like to come to this. And it's like, well, it means not murder. Because God kills a lot of people. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But see, God is just always. And see, you atheists like to exalt yourselves above God and think you're more justified than God. God is more of more pure eyes to, than to behold evil. Okay? He will not acquit the uh, guilty. The only way he'll do that is if they come to him and he saved them. Okay? All right. See, so many of you atheists like to put you up here and God way down here thinking you're more righteous and whatnot. OK. God kills. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You can't deny that. But see, God is perfect. God is just. God is right. And when God kills, he's just in doing so. Because the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And see, you atheists who don't want to accept that, and you wicked Christians who think you're your own God and whatnot, you don't want to accept that, that that's irrelevant. That's just nuts and bolts fact, okay? That's how it is. Your belief on that is irrelevant, if you want to accept that or not, okay? So when he says, thou shalt not kill, okay, God is just in all his ways. Man isn't. Okay, man isn't, all right? Abortion is killing, okay? Because someone stomped on your favorite toes and you decide to bash their brains in. That's killing. You get drunk at a bar and then run some over, somebody over a car. That's killing. You get upset at a Muslim and then decide to go chase him down and beat him half to death with a baseball bat. Now, that's not killing, but that might as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot of the problem is, especially with what's coming tomorrow, man, in the eyes of the world and even in Christianity, Man is here. With Christianity, they have God here. Atheists, down there. Okay? All right? There's so much of self-exhortation and exalting of self, especially as it is signified with these holidays. These pagan, wicked holidays. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. 
Thou shalt not covet. Now, see, this is the Tenth Commandment. And what the Catholics do is they get rid of the second one about the idols or the graven images, excuse me, and then they take the Tenth Commandment and make it into two. So covet is mentioned twice. Get, get a catechism. Get a catechism. That, that is documentable. That is provable. Uh, they, they do that so they can keep their relics and all their nonsense. Okay? That, that's, yeah. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, and the Lord abhors the covetous. Psalm 10, verse 3, I believe that is. Okay? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And George Carlin, when it came to this, he's like, never uh, leave covetousness alone. It creates jobs. Yeah, what do you think about that now, pal? Huh? These are the perfect requirements of God. Perfect. And any one of y'all, I don't care who you are, have you ever lied? No, I've never lied. Well, you just did there, so shut up. Hmm? You ever stole something? I have yet to meet one person, spirit, soul, and body, in my entire 49 years of existence, that when asked that in the context of this, not one person can say, honestly say, no, I haven't. Hmm. What about adultery? I've never cheated on my wife. I've never cheated on my husband. You know where I'm going with this. Um, you look after a woman, lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. It's not the same. Oh, but it is. See, that's the thing, dear friend. Adultery, yes, physically. But you do realize there's a, an adultery that isn't physical. Just like there's a fornication that isn't physical. Like when you join yourselves up with Rome and partake in all the things that Satan gives you. Hmm? And see, even, even the sodomite men and the lesbianas, um, you know, when you confront them with that, you know, they're, they're, yeah, they're twisted and perverted with that, yes, but... The same thing is they're lusting after someone in their heart. And the Lord is very specific about that, that you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. And, and look at the sexualization of what's everything's going on today. I've heard some people about that, like, make the argument, well, if there was no sexualization, then this would be a lot easier. I'll give you that. I'll give you that one. I will. I will. I'll give you that. If the meat wasn't being paraded around like that and all the dogs salivating over it, yeah, it would be easier. But it wouldn't go away. Especially us men. Right, brethren? Save men? Even, even we. It's like, like oh, 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 Lord. Oh. You know, it's winter now. It's cold, you know. So people are dressed up. So not... Like I said, the Ten Commandments. These are God's perfect requirements. And some of you are like, well, I've never had an idol um, or a graven image or something like that. But yet... You are your own God. You decide what is good and what is evil. See, nobody can keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. No one can do it. And that's the point. The only one who did just happened to be God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
okay? He did what no man can do. He kept the perfect requirements of God. And these are our schoolmasters bring us on to Christ. And today, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, how parents make their children into their little idols and they live vicariously to their children. And what's going to be happening tomorrow? And the Christianization of it. A brother of ours, now, who will see this video, um, set me straight, confirm, affirm, whatever. I remember our brother, he told me a tale about how a, he was talking to a Christian woman about Halloween. And our brother turned to Proverbs chapter 8. Our brother I think he might have even said, Alexander B. Hartwood, or I think he might have even said this, mentioned this in a video. I'm not sure. But in Proverbs chapter 8, we, in verses 32 and on to verse 36, Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. <clears throat> Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. And as it says on our front door, But he that sinneth, sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. It's not funny. It's not funny at all, actually. It's, it's atrocious. And as it says in the video, the Let Us Reason Together video, which will be in the description box, that video will be in every video, Lord willing, that the Lord allows your servant to do. Okay? That's, that one's uh, in every video. Isaiah 28, verses 14 on to verse 22. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And who has the power of death? Read that in the book of Hebrews. I believe that's the book of Hebrews. Satan. And the wages of sin is death. Oh, well, that means Satan brought death into the world. No, man brought death into the world. Not Satan. Satan was the temptation. He tempted. But not by gunpoint. See, that's a line that so many people like to blur. I said, well, Satan brought in death into the world. He himself, no, he tempted Eve. He didn't force Eve to go against what God said, did he? You show me where Satan forces anybody. Show me where God forces someone. Oh, right, that's a good one for the Calvinist. That's a good one for the Calvinist. Lost, wicked, devil Calvinist. God doesn't force anything on anybody. And see, when you come around saying that God forces people to be saved or lost, oh, that's not the God of Scripture. That's not the God of Scripture. Okay, be, be aware of that. Be aware of that. Because ye have said, 
We have made a covenant with death, and with hell we are at agreement. And with hell we are at agreement. Isaiah 5, 20 on verse 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Oh, the little rugrats running around dressed as devils and goblins and whatever. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. As I was saying, our brother told me a story about how he was talking to a Christian woman, and he brought up Proverbs 8. You know, all they that hate me love death. In regards to Halloween, I believe it was. But whatever it was, if it wasn't for Halloween, it was for another pagan holiday. But the point was, this Christian woman went to just as if I. It's like, well, we celebrate the death of Jesus. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that. Now, I don't know how it is in other nations. Hopefully some of the other nations have a little bit more sense in their head than us Americans. Down there, there's a Catholic, a German Catholic church, and right down there is the Methodists and whatnot, and down the way is the Presbyterian. There's a, there's a smorgasbord in Woodstock, okay? Tomorrow, there are going to be people in the parking lots so the little rugrats can get the candy and they dress up instead of going to people's houses. And see... The Christian will be like, well, what's wrong with that? Everything. We're not supposed to be conformed to the world, but we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And then they come up with the cue ball. You've got to be like the world to win the world. It's not what Paul said. He was made all things made all things. God put him in situations, okay? He didn't be, he, uh, what's, um, 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 he didn't as in Rome do as the Romans, okay? He didn't do that. Remember, we're strangers and pilgrims. And when you got these Christians indulging in something, which is, which is blatantly satanic, blatantly, Blatantly. But see, the yea hath God uh, thing, you take something that is pagan and try to Christianize it. <laughs> and it's just going just to gonna keep getting worse and worse. And the worst of them all, of course, and I have to mention this because we're on this topic. The worst of them all is Christ's Mass. That's the worst one of them all. That's the worst one of them all. At least with Halloween, at least it's blatant, okay? At least, okay? At least. Atheists, Muslims, and most people understand, at least with Halloween, they're glorifying death. They're glorifying that which is evil and calling it good and cute and blah, blah, blah. okay? That's obvious. Christ's Mass. Christ's Mass is worse. Why? Because it's religious. It's religious. More so than Halloween. And it deceives people in thinking that they're attributing something to the actual living God. And they're not. You're a Roman Catholic for a day. What can I say? What can I say? You have, yes, and we're going to look at this verse, uh, uh, this uh, 
portion of scriptures here in a little bit. Yeah, because God's not forcing you to do the right thing and neither is Satan. But just, just remember, you, you indulge in one of these pagan holidays, um, you're yoking yourself up with them. And, and that's all we're going to say about that other one. That uh, Don't want to even get started on that. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death, and with hell we are at agreement, when the overflowing scourge, scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. Why? For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So when the scourge... The body of Christ gets redeemed and God's judgment for seven years. And then you got these people, well, I'm saved because I just believe. Or I say because I uh, ate the Pucharist. Or I'm saved because my skin color is black. Or I'm saved because I'm elect. I'm not, uh, uh. <laughs> for we have made lies our refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. God didn't save you to indulge in the things of the world like this. They're supposed to be in samples. We all make mistakes, yes. But. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, and no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Check your margin for the references. And you might see 1 Corinthians in there somewhere. Okay? He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the, ha and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. There's a line of truth. Here it is, the authorized version. And Satan has done everything he can to blur that line. And tomorrow, when you see Christians doing the what is obviously of the devil, and like that gal said to our brother, it's like, well, we celebrate the death of Jesus. So we all, do you see what kind of a war? That is not the mentality. That is not the thought process of a saved individual. Even, even people like these coadjutor devils, even they know, and I was like, I shouldn't probably say something like that because that'll give me away just like that to anyone who has the Lord within them. You know? <laughs> not even not even these coadjutors. Not even that guy from England would say something that stupid. Okay? Not even he would say something like that. You know? Because that's like... See, and that's an obvious statement of someone who is their own God and seeks to justify the wicked for reward. And what reward is that? Sometimes tangible, yes, but it makes me feel good. If it makes you feel good, do it. My dear friend, you do realize the distinction between the one that I have, uh, that I hate, and yourself, dear friend. I, you, you, you do. You do know the distinction. I'm not talking about you. Okay. I love you. And your covenant with death shall be disnulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. Yeah. Satan's going to the, uh, to the uh, lake of fire. Okay. He's going to the lake of fire where a lot of you are going as well. There's no hope for you with anything that this, the devil offers you. Nothing. If anything, it's a temporary band-aid at the worst. <laughs> okay? And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. 
when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then shall ye be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. From morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. Think about the time of Jacob's trouble. When we're out of here, and these people are going through all this nonsense, so it's crazy, whatever, okay? God's judgment, okay? God's judgment. They're going to be like, what hit us? Because think about, you know, in the book of Revelation, the things that Satan is going to employ are not going to make sense to a rational mind. But it's going to be a time when the body of Christ is not on the earth. God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, omnipotent, excuse me. Um, he, he ain't going anywhere. The ones who go are the body of Christ. And when that happens, the, this dispensation ends. Okay? For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. When they say, peace, peace, and then sudden destruction come upon them. You will heal the hurt of, my, of the daughter of my people slightly in saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Okay. See, the blood of Jesus Christ covers from all sins. But see, if you're resting on a bed that you're longer than, like say, oh, Catholicism, where no Catholic can genuinely look at you and say, yeah, I know I'm going to heaven, because that's a sin of presumption. Okay? A Muslim, the same thing. Okay? Well, because... Their religion came from Rome, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, okay? Yes, your religion did, okay? Same thing. They, I don't know, a Mormon, a J-Ho, well, not the J-Ho's, <laughs> still to this day, they, they still hold to that 144,000 thing. <laughs> Nonsense. Those guys are crazy. Those guys are crazy, Okay? So all these things offer a comfort, the bed and a covering. But they're not sufficient enough, are they? No, because you have no assurance. Nothing. Hmm. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Pirism. Pirism. I forgot what the thing is. Perez him. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gabeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Oh, like his judgment? Mm -hmm. Because remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, there are going to be things that are going to be hard to imagine. We can believe them because they're written down, but I mean, the actual sight of some of these things. Wow. Why do you think Daniel was all kind of messed up when he saw? I, I am one that believes that Daniel was given a glimpse of what's going to happen during the time of Jacob's trouble. I really do. I believe that the Lord allowed Daniel to see visually that time that's going to be coming sometime soon. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. His strange act, his judgment, and then his second coming and the bringing in of the kingdom of heaven. Now, therefore, be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. Think about that. Think about these guys. Their bands are made strong. The people of Israel got their rear end handed to them in judgment by King Nebuchadnezzar. Then they send to Jeremiah. Tell us what God wants us to do. Jeremiah comes by, tells them what God wants them to do. And what do they do? Lord, our God hasn't sent you to us. But Baruch, he sets you on against us and they do it anyway. And then when they go to Egypt, go back to the world. <laughs> They're like, well, we're going to do what we've always done. Bands are made firm. Okay. Bands are made strong. God will send them strong delusion. 
He doesn't deceive you. But if you want this nonsense, this falsity, this falsehood, that's what you really want. God will let, he'll shovel it up onto you like crazy, boy. And see, mockers make us, uh, uh, fools make a mock at sin. They mock sin. It's not a big deal. A little doesn't hurt. You're being too extreme. The, the, right there, man. Your bands are made strong. Not impossible to break those bands, you know. But it's not going to be like force, like the stupid Calvinist says. Okay? So, when you look at this context, you're at... You're in agreement with hell. You've made a covenant with death. Okay? You made a covenant with death. And the wages of sin is death. The devil has the power of death. Okay? And in all this stuff, these people have made their bands strong. Because they're mockers. And what is our Lord? And what is our Lord, you know? What, you know, Isaiah 22, 12 on verse 14. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. Turn from your idols. Turn from yourself for the name of. But see, Halloween. Grown men dressing up in costumes. Well, what's wrong with that? Hey, look, uh, you know, if you want to dress up and make believe, aren't you a little old for that? <laughs> okay. When I was a child, I thought I was a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. What do they do? They live vicariously through their children. And some would even bring up that um, cost play stuff, which I, now I gotta admit. <laughs> I've actually, I haven't seen with my own eyes, but I've watched a couple of these things with these grown men and grown women coming out with these incredible costumes. Okay, like that, okay. It's like, huh, huh, okay, okay. But see, they do that stuff here in Halloween in open defiance of the Lord. And think about that because one of the premises of Halloween was to disguise themselves, to hide themselves from devils and stuff like that, right? But see, he who has eyes, will he not see? Well, you, you, you think you're disguising yourself from God on this day so you can get away with a little devilment? Think about it, you know? It would probably be better for some of you Christians to just brazenly say, Lord, I know you hate it. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to do what I'm going to do. That would probably be more better for you than trying to weave or ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Try to weave a justification into something that you cannot justify through Scripture. The only thing you can come to is, well, all things are lawful for me. Should you do evil that good may come? Huh? Should we be like the world? Oh, we got to win that. Paul never said that. He was made all things that he might by all means save some. Okay? Come on, people. Come on. Get, get, yeah. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Live it up. Yeah, what is that? You only live once. That's not true. Your body, this body only lives once. Um, see, the eternal thing of you is your spirit and your soul. Okay? Remember, man was made a living soul. Your body was made of dirt. That's what's going to die, okay? Other than that, man is his soul and his spirit, mankind, okay? That's eternal, okay? 
That's eternal. All right? And that is either going to spend, you are either going to be in heaven with the Lord for eternity or in hell for all eternity. Like fire. Okay? All right? <laughs> all right? So, this, you only live once? That's not true. You're going to live forever. Where, though? That's the question. Because, yeah, we're going to die. I'm going to die. You're going to die. Everyone's going to die. But see, our spirit and soul, those are what is eternal of man, housed in the sagging skin suit. Okay? So, I guess you could say, yeah, you only live once. Your body, this, only lives once. But as it is appointed unto men once to die and after this, the judgment, your soul lives forever. Okay? Okay? So, hey, drink it up. Beat it up. Let's go. Let's go trick-or-treating. But, hey, hey, we celebrate the death of Jesus, so let's... I'm glad I was not there when that happened, brother. I, I'd have gone off on her. I, I would have. And our, our brother, I, I believe, also did. He'll, he'll, he'll straighten it out if I'm messed up. He will. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But um, I, I'd have gone off on her. I would have. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It's like, you wicked, you know. And it was revealed, verse 14, and it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, said the Lord of hosts. And then you go right back to Isaiah 28 and what we looked at. Verse 22. Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. And this iniquity will not be purged from you till you die. And some of you are going to die and go to hell. Probably the majority of you. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Chapter. Oh, not Esther. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations, oh, verses 29 on the 32, excuse me. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth. Have they done unto their gods, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods? What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Verse 31 there. And encompass also verse 30. How did these people serve their gods? And then they try to encompass that in what they call Christianity. And just as if I. And they're, they're sacrificing their sons and their daughters or burning them. Letting the kids go. That's all for the kids. Deuteronomy 32 while we're here. Deuteronomy 32 verses 15 on to verse 18. Read Deuteronomy 32 today. Go ahead. Read something. 15 on verse 18. But Jeshurun. Jeshurun means highly favored. Waxed fat and kicked. 
Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick and art covered with fatness. Prosperity. Self-sufficiency. Abundant of abundance of bread and look in your margin. Abundance of bread and idleness was in her hands. And when all things were going well, then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the capital or rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. It's like with some of these Christians, man, you just want to grab them. It's like, okay, you're saying that you're saved. You're saying you're a saint. What you are doing is making God look bad by you justifying the wicked. That's the way it is nowadays. Verse 17. One second, please. Verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of that rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. God made you. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your belief. It matters not. God created you. You're not here by accident. Okay? All right? God created you. God has given you life, the light behind the eyes. God has let you live today. You're here because of God. God made you. Your belief on that is irrelevant. That doesn't matter. The fact is that God created you. Period. Okay? That's it. it you... <laughs> you're going to find that out eventually okay you're going to find that out you will become a believer eventually okay and that doesn't mean that you're going to be saved okay but you will come to realize the truth that yeah God really did make you <laughs> yeah he did okay and the atheists they think they are their own gods they're not being mindful that hey God made me I ought to see what he wants what I got to do, and that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, you know, like, what what must I do to be saved? Okay? Of that rock, rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God at home. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter set of scriptures gets just right worn in verses 19 on to verse 23 in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 what shall I then what excuse me what say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered and sacrificed to idols is anything but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And there's the reference for what we just looked at in the margin of my scriptures. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. King Solomon tried that all his life. He tried to walk both ends of the spectrum. There is no option C. Satan wants to introduce you. He thinks that he's introducing to you an option C. There is no option C. It's either A or B. Okay? It's either or. There's no middle ground. Solomon, and you read his biography as it were, Ecclesiastes, he tried it and he couldn't do it. Okay? You're either going to love the one or hate the other. You can't have it both ways. 
you know, in the book of Revelation, our Lord talks about, therefore, because you are neither hot nor cold, therefore I will spew you out of my mouth, lukewarm. Okay? I have respect for an atheist who brazenly is like, yeah, you're right. If Jesus came to me, I wouldn't believe in him anyway. Good, good luck. Good luck with that one, pal, at the Great White Throne. But hey, I know where you stand. Okay? You're at least standing on something. With the woke pagan Christianity that's around today, it's not all woke, but I mean, that's just a good example. It's like, well, we don't know. Wishy washy. Um, you know, like with these guys who say that there's no perfect word of God, you need to come to me for me to tell you what God says. Um, they're neither hot nor cold. They're hot in that they're against what God has uh, truly said. Yes, but it's like they're so wishy-washy. You know? At least my enemies are, except, except for a select few, are really up front. At least we know that they're our enemies. You know? They're cold. Okay? Or hot, however you want to put it. When you, you know, the unstable man in all his ways, up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, ways are always movable. Makes God sick. Pick a side. Choose. We have free will. Choose. You're going to do it God's way or you're going to do it your own way. And if you're doing it your own way, you're following your father, the devil. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the tables of de and the table of devils. You can't have it both ways. Is that not made clear to you? Let's see. Yeah, that's it. We're we're so I, and I know you'll I'll know you'll jump on that, brother, and that's why I kind of said that because I know you will. Man comment section but um, well we celebrate the death of Jesus <laughs> and they use that to justify doing that which is evil that's not an exaggeration that will be that part of it if I have the um, details messed up, like I said, that'll be corrected, but that's, that's Christianity. That's Christianity. You want that, huh? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? A very good verse to prove free will. Oh, and this is their argument. And it cannot be refuted. We could go back and forth with the yeah buts, yeah buts. This is their go-to. And it cannot be disputed. You know, you can lead the horse to water. Can't make the horse drink the water, can you? You can fix ignorant. You can't fix stupid. But, you know, with the, the, the disgusting Christ Mass, with them doing the Halloween and St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's Day and, and all these Vesper things and all this crazy nonsense, these traditions of man, and they try to weave it in, and they tie, go to Romans 14, and they go to this, they go to that, they go to Philippians, they go, they just go all over the place, trying to just as if I. When they, and then they say, all oh, things are lawful for me. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You are. You are! But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. 
and all things edify not. That is talking about you have the freedom to choose either or. We have the freedom to choose to do whatever we want to do. Now, we'll pay heavy consequences for them, but you know that guy who decides to take a gun and shoot someone just because he was mad? He had the freedom to make that choice and do the action. Now, he's going to pay a heavy consequence for it, but he had the freedom to do that, that action and take that course, didn't he? Didn't he? Stop. You don't. That's the fact. Okay? Yeah, they're going to pay a heavy price, of course. Of course you're going to pay a heavy price. But see, in the action thereof, you have free will. And see, that's, that's, that's totally contrary to everything that Calvinism says. Okay? I mean, it really is. <laughs> Stay away from that garbage. But yes, you know, that, and it, like I said... You know, when you got these guys who yoked themselves up with the Vatican for one day of the year at least, and they, they come to this, all well, things are lawful for me. I say, yeah, you're right. And they're right. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can. Shame on you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. But all things are not expedient. And all things... All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. And if we are called as ambassadors for Christ, and we are admonished to not be conformed to that, Isaiah 3, and then we'll be done. Oh, wait. Was, was that all of it? Uh, uh, verse 23, was that all of it? Thank you, pardon. This is a little impromptu, as uh, obviously you could tell. Uh, was that all of it? Yes, that was. Okay. Isaiah 3, verses 10 on verse 22. That won't be done. Isaiah 3, verses 10 on verse 22. Come on, fingers, work with me. The set of scriptures is just getting perfect. It's perfect already. I mean, the wear and tear of it itself with this beautiful Cambridge I was given. It's just now getting the right flexibility and stuff like that. That said, no. Those of you who use the scriptures, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Isaiah 3, verses 10 and verse 22. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be. Yeah, am I right? Yes. <clears throat> oh, one moment. Isaiah chapter 2. Not Isaiah chapter 3. I, I do that sometimes, man. I'll, I'll write down, I'll have the right thing, uh, the Lord will give the right thing, and then I'll write down the wrong thing. Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Verses 10 on to verse 22. Then we'll be done. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. In his second coming, when we get redeemed. For the day of the Lord, for the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. I don't need to God. I am my own God. I'll do what I want to do. All things are lawful for me. Yeah, you're right. Be careful. And upon everyone that is lifted up, he shall be brought down. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, 
and the haughtiness of men shall be made low. The Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. And remember, every single form of idolatry is an extension of what? You being your own God. Whether it's a, a marionette statue, whether it's a Buddhist statue, whatever it is, it's an extension of you being your own God. Every single one of them, every single incident. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Oh, earthquakes in divers places, huh? In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats, unclean animals. I don't know if any of you have ever actually eaten a bat not too bad. <laughs> Never mind. To go into the clefts of the rocks and to eat the tops and, excuse me, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. That's mentioned twice in this context. Shake terribly the earth. There'll be earthquakes during the time of Jacob's trouble, the likes that this earth has never seen. And shaking, the removing of those things that can be shaken, that the things that are shaken, that cannot be shaken, may remain. That's from Hebrews. I'm trying to remember it, but that's from Hebrews. Okay, It's going to shake things that can be easily shaken and taken out of the way for those things that are stable will remain. Why? Because they're built upon a foundation. And I love this. I love this. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is he to be accounted of? And man in his best state is altogether vanity. Wanted to just, just you know, just wanted to address this little thing. This, you know, the Lord gave me this little thing. Um, you know, tomorrow, Lord willing, um, Lord willing, tomorrow's Tuesday, Tracting Tuesday. Uh, it's supposed to be, uh, it's cold right now, it's like not even 40 degrees up here by where we live. Uh, uh, up in, uh, uh, where is that, North Dakota, where one brother is, he's, he's got snow already, man. It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't even want to think of that. But um, our weather had said something about maybe snowing tomorrow, which I hope so. Um, if the Lord doesn't intercede with horrific weather, um, Tomorrow, I'll track in Tuesday. Um, hopefully, we get to get out and do some tracking, especially on a day like tomorrow, you know, Halloween and go tracking and whatnot. So, if, if some of you saints would you kind of please pray for that, you know, ultimately that the Lord's will be done, and ultimately that the Lord will send like some kind of storm so kids won't go out, you know, that'd be great. But, you know, anyway, just wanted to. This little video for you, just to give you something to think about. And you saints, you know, the whole question comes up, well, what happens if a kid comes to my door? If someone comes to your door and knocks on your door, they are coming to your house, to your resident, and if you open the door, you got to deal with it, okay? Um, and they're, okay, you, you, they come there, and they, it's like trick-or-treat. He's like, no, I ain't giving you a trick 
country, mm -hmm. have, have a track, and you know what you do? Because most, most of the kids that do the trick-or-treating, they're little rugrats, most of them. And even some of these teenagers um, use a little discernment. But if you have that happen, you know, if, and you open the door, I mean, hey, you know, you, you, I mean, you're in your house, and you're like, on tomorrow, you're like, ugh, just don't answer the door. <laughs> let, them, let, them, let them see you as they're reading the book. And they're knocking and they look in at you and you're, you're like reading the scriptures and you're like, hi, you know, ignore them. Don't look like, go away, go away, do that. But if you answer the door, when someone knocks on the door, um, then you, you know what you do? Go to the child and you say, take this to your mother or father. Or your father and mother, excuse me. Take this and give it to them and let them explain it to you. Okay? Otherwise, just, you know, you don't have to turn off your lights. You're not a prisoner in your own home. But, you know what? Don't answer the door. Okay? If you, and if you do, then that's on you. And, you know, do whatever. Okay? Do whatever. Otherwise, just ignore it. <laughs> We've sat in our place before. Not here at the apartment. But I remember we sat there before at the old place. And, you know, people came over and we just sat there and ignored them. Even when they could see us, in, uh, see us, it's like, hey, you know, we just know. I was like, don't go away, <laughs> you know. It's not that hard. Okay. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just a quick little video. A lot of things are coming, brethren. So, a lot of things are coming. But um, thank you, thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for one another. We love you and thank you, um, and brother. Um, uh, my brother from Georgia, sorry I missed your call. Um, I'll try to get a, call, a hold of you today or maybe tomorrow. I don't know, but I, I, I got your call. I uh, love you, praying for you. Uh, brother from Ohio, I love you, pray you, praying for you. Overdue, brother. Um, my brother from Jersey, our brother from North Dakota, our brethren from overseas, okay, um, our sisters from overseas. Uh, we love you. We love you. We love you all. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.